Mahari Menka Mandu no Cheki Cheki Mahari Menka Mandu no Fiao Mahari Menka Mandu no Cheki Mahari Menka Mandu Mahari Menka Mandu no worry Mahari Menka Mandu no cheki 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 Mahari Menka Mandu no worry <laughs> oh, be the red to a man, a GGG. Oh, be the red to a man, a Mahari, make a man, no worry. Mahari Mega Mandu no Cheki Cheki Mahari Mega Mandu no Worry They say they are going to sack many people in the country in custom force and the choosing was there and he made an argument before you know it other people were sacked and he remained and promotion time came and they said well you know it looked like a difficult situation and he made the pastor wearing his rank to show him that it is what done the next minute he became a pretendent of custom. Our God is Baba. What God or choosing cannot do. What I want to plead with you is be a choosing indeed. There are people that are not choosing indeed. Upon all what they are seeing and hearing, they are still wondering, they are still doubting. What are you doubting? Praise the Lord. How many times will you kill a cow before they call you a cow killer? Eh? Uberone gige ebwe ya pono ebwe. Can you imagine this people? Praise the Lord. With all your heart, every service, every crusade, everywhere, every nation. When will you believe the God of choosing? Praise the Lord. Ali go, Ali go. God not choose. Ali go. Ali go, Ali go. God not choose. Ali go. Go go not choose. Go go not choose. Go go not choose. Go go not choose. Ali go, Ali go. Go not choose. Ali go go go. Hari go, Hari go, Hari go, Hari go, Hari go, Hari go. Amen. No no be a silly, no no be a caraca. Oh no no be a, oh no no be a, oh no no be a. They got the choosing, they got the choosing, they got the choosing. Oh no no be a, oh no no be a, oh no no be a, oh no no be a. They got the choosing. Onya no rubia. Onya no.
no lo vi aún, hoy no lo vi aún, hoy no lo vi aún, hoy no lo vi aún, de todo chusín, de todo chusín, de todo chusín, de todo chusín, hoy no lo vi aún, hoy no lo vi aún, de todo chusín. Amen. We are in the palace of the great king. And he's a strong God. And where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may ask him, What doest thou? He see you. I welcome you the palace of the great king. He will prove to you that he's a strong God your case must be given attention say amen to me my daddy we have come again remember your people for good let it be proven that they have met with you and let there be definite changes for good for good in jesus name I cover here with the blood of Jesus as the Holy Ghost to take over and bless everyone in Jesus name shall we get seated in Ezekiel chapter 34 Ezekiel chapter 34 I read from verse 25 Ezekiel 34 and from verse 25 and it reads and I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods and I will make of them and the places round about my heap a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. That shall be showers of blessings. And the trees of the field shall eat her fruit, and the earth shall eat her increase, and they shall be served in their land. I shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and not shall make them afraid. And I will raise all for them a plant only now and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land neither be the shame of the hidden anymore thus shall they know that i the lord their god and with them and that they even the house of israel and my people say the lord god and ye my flock the flock of my pastor are men and I am your God says the Lord God in Isaiah chapter 27 Isaiah 27 I read verse 3 Isaiah 27 verse 3 and it reads I the Lord do keep it I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. From this chapter, some verses, I'm bringing to you the theme, Chowers of Blessings, Part 2. Chowers of Blessings, Part 2. Our Lord, who has opened the heaven for the showers after the baptism of abundance, Yes, last month we were all baptized 
with abundance of blessings. And after that, but it is not abundance of blessings last month, I want to let you know, God has decided to cause showers to water the abundance of blessings so that the blessing will never diminish. Rather, the blessing will increase more and more. And I'm assuring you, your blessing shall increase. You will not lose what you have received. But you will flourish, you will increase more and more. So, he has decided to rain his blessings upon us by unveiling his glory, which was lost by the first man called Adam, and restored to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. So today, he is said to unveil the glory for constant showers of his goodness in our lives, and we shall never be the same in Jesus' name. If you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, I read from verse 9. Look at the Bible. Hebrews chapter 2, and from verse 9. And he reads, But we see Jesus, take note of that, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, to test death for every man, for he became him. For who are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So it is very clear, Jesus came to restore the glory, to bring me and you into the glory which was lost by the first man, Adam and Eve. So, take note, every one of us must be restored. You will enjoy the glory of the Lord and the blessings, every aspect of his glory, which constitute the blessing shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Don't forget in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Please look at your Bible. I read from verse 16. Look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and from verse 16. And I read. Look at your Bible. For chapter 4 from verse 16. For which cause we faint, we faint, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed, is renewed day by day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go back to that place we're reading. Chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I read verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but to a, but to a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding an internal weight of glory. Yes. Look at verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 
Now, look at First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. I read from verse 17. Chapter 3 and verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. For if any man defy the temple of God, he shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you see men to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. So, take note. The point is, God Almighty, through His Son Jesus Christ, I restored the glory of God, which unstood the showers on us through Jesus Christ. And as we come, beholding the presence of the Lord, and the Lord takes over our soul, our spirit, our heart, we shall dwell in that glory. Praise the Lord, which comes to the showers. And so, as we go into the body of the message, we shall understand it very well. Praise the Lord. So, for more insight and benefit, we shall consider the flowing of head is one, the goodness of the Lord lost and restored. Two, our application and benefit. Let's look at the goodness of the Lord lost and restored. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, let's see. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. And it reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Take note of that point. When Adam, the first man, sinned, he lost the divine nature of God's goodness and possessed the wicked nature of the devil. As we can see in Genesis chapter 3 and verse, from verse 1. Genesis chapter 3. Let's see. Chapter 3 and verse 1. And it reads, Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave, his, gave also unto her husband with her. And he did it. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among guests, the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? At this point in time, Adam have seen through Eve and they have lost the glory of God and they started hiding, including the glory of goodness, which we are discussing this day, was lost. And the God came looking for them, say, Where are you? And let's see the answer of Adam and in verse chapter 3 and verse 10. And I read chapter 3, verse 10. And he said, chapter 3, verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid 
because I was naked and I hid myself. He had lost the divine nature of God. He had lost the glory of God. He has sinned and he cannot stand before God. And that's why when God came looking for him, he said that I have your voice and I hid myself because I was naked. So he had lost the glory, including the glory we are discussing about. And you know that Romans chapter 3, verse 23, what we read before says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So since then, since after the fall of the first man in the garden of Eden, man has been manifesting the nature of wickedness instead of God's divine nature of goodness, of righteousness. Man has been manifesting wickedness immediately after the fall. And through that nature, they begat me and you and brought everyone into the world with wicked, wicked heart and also the nature of doing evil. Now, take note, instead of God's divine nature, in Genesis chapter 4, here was an example immediately after the fall and they had that children, let us see what happened to those children in chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4 verse 8 and I read verse 8 Genesis chapter 4 and verse 8 and Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him that is the act of wickedness. He hated his brother. And that was a nature, the nature of the devil. And he killed his brother. It was never the nature of God. But because it was the nature of the devil. Which my God through the fall. When he had lost the glory. Then this wicked nature was transferred to the heart of man. And we had the record of killing for the first time, which is contrary to the divine nature of God. That is wicked nature. Now, if you look at that place we are reading, it says, chapter 4, I read, chapter 4 and verse 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Ebed thy brother? And he said, I know not. And I am my brother's keeper, wicked nation. He knew, he knew what happened, he lied. Now, look at verse 10. And he said, Why has that done? What has that done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground, and now at that cost from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and vagabond, and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. So this was the beginning of the suffering of man, the first sons of Adam and Eve possessed the nature, the depraved nature, the fallen nature, the evil nature from their parents, which they got from Satan, and they started killing. The killing started because they were begotten after the nature of their parents and not after image and likeness of God. In chapter 5, I read Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Remember, God created them in his image and what? Likeness. But what? Look at what followed in verse 2. Men and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created, and Adam lived on a hundred and thirty years 
and begat a son in his own likeness. No longer the likeness of who? God. After his image and call his name said. So this is the beginning. He brought children no longer after the image and likeness of God, but that of man and that of wicked nature, which they got from Adam after their fall. In Ephesians chapter 2, let's see something there. Ephesians chapter 2, I read from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, I read it from verse 1. Look at what the Bible said concerning concerning what happened then at the garden of Eden, chapter 2 and from verse 1. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We are in time past. You walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we are by nature children of wrath, even as others. This was the nature we all had before we became born again. And this nature was transferred to us through our first parents, Adam and Eve, after they have fallen, after they have lost the glory of God. We all went through this devilish and Adamic nature. But remember, at the very beginning, God created them in the image and likeness of God. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 27. And it reads, chapter 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them so at the beginning God created man in his own image and likeness but after the fall of man he lost it and possessed the satanic nature the nature of wickedness and begat us in that wicked nature thank God for what the Lord has done for me and for you but look at Exodus chapter 34 when Moses was about to walk with God, he said, God, show me your glory. And that was glory that was lost. Let me know the kind of nature you are made up so I can know how to walk with you. I know how to approach you. And so, look at what happened. Exodus chapter 34. I read verse 6. Chapter 34. Reading verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, made sinful and gracious. Lord suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Now, this was God revealing to Moses the glory. Because Moses prayed that prayer. Look at chapter 33 and verse 18. Exodus 33, verse 18. And I read, verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now, this was Moses telling God, praying to God, show me your glory, which is what we have seen God reveal it. If you look at that, that place, in verse 18, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And chapter 34, verse 6, he said, I am abundance in world, in goodness. Praise the Lord. But this glory was lost through Adam and Eve. But God in his mercy has restored this goodness to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. When he restored the glory, the glory that was lost, Jesus brought all of them back, including the glory of his goodness. That's what we read before. 
in the book of Hebrew chapter 2 and verse 9 Hebrew chapter 2 verse 9 let's read it again because of the rule in this message chapter 2 and verse 9 and I read Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9 but we see Jesus take note on that point we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God to test death for every man that's the price of our salvation he died he shed his blood that we might be saved look at that, that the glory might be restored look at that place in verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many many sons unto glory to make the captain of their of their salvation perfect through suffering so jesus christ died for me and for you died at the cross of calvary to bring all of us to glory as many that are receiving today they shall have the glory restored back to you glory of righteousness of holiness of mercy of love of goodness so christ came to bring back the glory praise the lord so take note the bible testified of our lord jesus christ in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 to show you what was the jesus came to do what was it that jesus did while he was here and what nature does he possess is it the nature of the wicked one is it the nature of the holy one to show the source he said in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 and i read chapter 10 verse 38 dear four look at that place chapter 10 and verse 38 let's read it acts chapter 10 verse 38. how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good doing what doing good to show he has come with the glory of god's goodness with the glory of god love with the glory of god righteousness with the glory of god faithfulness with the glory of god mercy he has come and the bible said he went about doing good because of the nation he came with because he has come to restore that nature and then demonstrated it and the bible said in chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so he came and demonstrated the fact that he had brought back the glory of God and glory of goodness of God. Remember, he said to uh, Moses, he said, The Lord God passed before him and proclaimed. And one of them, he says, Abundance in what? In goodness. Praise the Lord. So when he came, he could not help but went about doing good to show a come to bring about what was lost by Adam and Eve. So he went about doing good, manifesting God's goodness. For God was with him. Praise the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ manifested and demonstrated God's divine nature of goodness to prove the restoration of God's goodness to mankind. So that we can receive it, abide in it, and practice the same for our benefit. Praise the Lord. You see, once we receive Jesus and receive the divine nature, the glory lost, including the glory of goodness, as you go on to practice good work, as you go on to do good things, as you go on to maintain goodness, righteousness, I want to let you know it is for your own good. Praise the Lord. 
Now, one of us that gave us this money, he encouraged everybody to live right and to continue in righteousness. And there is blessing in it. And truly, if you dwell in God's glory of goodness, of mercy, of righteousness, of faithfulness, my friend, you will enjoy the blessings of God. You will enjoy the presence of God. Are you hearing me? You will enjoy the power of God. God will never depart from you. Now, if you look at this place in the Bible, in First Peter, I read First Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. First Peter chapter 3, reading verse 13. Let's read First Peter chapter 3. And verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if you be full of that which is good? Who will harm you? And Sammy, if you are going about doing good, if you are going about living right, who will harm you? And Sammy now. The Bible said, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for you, who can be against you? Do you know that when you are, you know, manifesting the act of righteousness, that is the presence, a sign of the presence of God upon you. When you hate evil and do good and practice righteousness, the Bible says, who will harm you? The reason is this, if God be for you, who can be against you? If you are, have received the nature of God, the glory of God through Jesus Christ, and you go on living right, my friend, no weapon formed against Ocha prosper. Because the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not what? If God is your shepherd, God is with you. Jesus did say it in John chapter 8, verse 29. He said, He that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always the thing that pleases When you do what pleases God, God will be with you. When you have the nature of God or goodness or righteousness or mercy and you go about practicing it, my friend, nothing can harm you. Praise the Lord. Because God shall be with you and no evil shall be for you in Jesus' name. And this writer said, who is it that will harm you? If you be fuller of what? That which is good. In, look at your Bible. In Luke chapter 7 verse 16. Luke chapter 7. And read verse 16. And it says. 7. 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God. Saying. That a great prophet is risen among us and that God had visited his people when Jesus came it was clearly shown that it that was God his heart was of God and he is a personality of God he has visited his people and therefore he did mighty things and did good to everyone and it was clearly stated testified that God has visited his people. Praise the Lord. So, as we go on to do what is right, that will be a proof that you are indeed a child of God and the presence of God will be with you and no evil shall be for you. In Matthew chapter 5, let's read. Please, let's take Mark rather. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I read from verse 1 Mark chapter 5 and it says chapter 5 and from verse 1 and they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadrenians and when he was come out of the ship immediately they are met him out of the tongues, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, 
and no man could find him no not with shares because they had been often bound look, look at that play because that he has been often bound with fathers and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fathers broken in pieces neither could any man thank him and always in always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high God and I adjure thee by God that thou torments me not so let's stop there the point is this man saw when you look at Jesus he knew that this is the son of God he knew that this is the presence of God and he bowed before him but it was a man that nobody could pass through there but because Jesus came with the glory of God of goodness doing good this man could not harm him rather he bowed before him and even testified like he's the son of God praise the Lord so Jesus has come to restore and to prove that the glory of God has been restored that God nature divine nature has come upon humanity again that's why he went about doing good praise the Lord and so take note throughout this month as we begin to behold God's goodness and practice it no evil shall befall us nothing that belongs to us that shall be lost because the presence of God shall be with us now who can be against us now if God has blessed you last month abundantly and now we are maintaining God's righteousness goodness and the presence of God is with you tell me who can touch those things tell me those who can be able to touch you torment you and plant disease in your life my friend it is impossible that takes me to point number two praise the Lord our application and benefit praise the Lord now if you look at those scriptures we read before in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6 Exodus 34 let's read verse 6 and it reads and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God made sinful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth now that is the nature of God God is full of mercy is full of goodness and I want to let you know God, God is full of righteousness and with that nature I want to let you know if you be a child of God and have that nature you will do what is right you will hardly do evil but then something happened as in relation with the message we are discussing today let's go to the same chapter in Exodus chapter 34 let us read from verse 30 Exodus chapter 34 and verse 30 and when Aaron chapter 34 verse 30 and when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses behold the skin of his first charms and they were afraid to come nigh him and Moses called unto them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him and Moses talked with them and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh and he gave them a commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai 
until Moses has done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with the Lord with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spoke unto the children of Israel that wish he was come and led. Verse 35. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses first shone, and Moses put veil, put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Now look at what happened there. Moses went to be with the Lord. Beholding the glory of God, the face of Moses physically began to change, changed, and began to shine. That ordinary Israelite could not be able to look at his face because of the glory of God, which has covered him. And whenever he wants to talk to the people, he will cover his face with veil. And then he spoke to them. And whenever he went to be with God, he removed the veil. And so Moses was covered with glory that ordinary Israelite could not look at his face. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to understand this month is specially designed that all of us will continue to behold not just this month but until Jesus comes. All of us continue to dwell in the glory and begin continue to you know listen to the word of God and do right and do what is good and God presence will take over us to the point that evil personality cannot come near us listen brethren the psalmist witnessed this Paul the apostle witnessed this and many believers witness what I'm preaching to you now I want to listen to the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd what happened? I shall not want and the Paul the apostle said if God be for me if God be for us, who can be against us? If we are dwelling in the presence of God, beholding His glory, the presence of God shall be with us. Even unbelievers, when they look at us, they will turn away. People that are possessed, so they will even fall down. Something happened some years, some years back. I was standing on the road where I parked the motor, and a man who was violently mad, violently mad, he was coming 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 with him very heavy hair and the the man was so big and was coming any person could run away because he was coming with anger but as soon as he approached me brethren as soon as this man approached me and look at me, and he turned back and started going where he was he was I don't know what to, how to describe this incident. This man was coming from Olu to Awo Mama. I mean, Awo then Minnesota. And that was the road. So I packed my motor with it. And he was going, you know, a mad man. He was going on that road, like not turning back, heading to Hihara. While I was, I was, I packed my motor at that Awo then Minnesota, waiting for somebody. And as he was coming, coming furiously, coming. As soon as he sighted me, he turned back and started going where he was coming from. He saw something. Did you hear me? I say he saw what? He saw something. And I want to let you know, if the presence of God, his glory is upon you, so shall they turn away from your business, from your head, from your family. They will not touch it. They will not come back. That's why, of course, the scripture said, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet. No. The devil knows this scripture. When they see you and see the presence of God, the Spirit of God upon you, the glory of God upon you, they can't touch you. That is exactly what we are preaching this month. We are saying, We are receiving abundance of God's blessings. We must stay in the presence of God. We must maintain righteousness, holiness, and goodness of God so that God will be with us and no evil shall touch what you have received. Is it clear what I'm saying? 
Praise the Lord. So, I want to let you know that this month, showers of blessings, showers of miracle will be our portion. Praise the Lord. And so many years, when this message was preached, I told you that God will be confirming this message with physical showers every day of our fellowship. I don't know whether there is anything like that today. Yes, this morning I pray that you will not rain. I forgot that I have already said that every every day God will confirm this message with what? Rain. Then, as I was there in the office preparing, I heard the noise. I heard the noise. I was trying to actually I pray that there should no rain. And then the mind reminded me, but this is the showers confirming the showers of blessings. Praise the Lord. And it was great. He has confirmed it and he has gone away. Do you see rain again? I'm asking you a question. Do you see any rain again? He has confirmed that every time this message is from God and it is truth that shall be showers of blessings. So, as the rain has fallen this day, confirming the showers, so also the blessings of God will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. So, that shall be what? I'm not hearing you. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, Ezekiel 34, I read from verse 25. Look at your Bible. Ezekiel 34 from verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and cause the evil beast to cease out of their land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the wood. And I will make them and the places round about my his a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. That shall be showers of blessings. And the fruit and the tree of the field shall yield her increase. And the air shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And shall know that I am the Lord when I broke in the bands of their use and delivered them out of the hands of those that served themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the hidden. Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, and they shall dwell safely and not shall make them afraid. The point is that as long as we dwell, in these showers, in this glory, honestly, what we have shall yield increase. Nothing can touch it. What you receive, abundance of blessing, shall flourish. Even your head will blossom. Are you hearing me? Your finance will blossom. You will never lose anything. If you have received something from God, and you are dwelling in the presence of God and God is with you. Tell me who can take that in the way. I'm not hearing you again. That's exactly the message. And so take note in the book of look at it. Jewel chapter 2. Jewel chapter 2. I read Jewel. Look at your Bible. As we dwell in his presence. As we return to him, instead of losing anything, that shall be restoration. I didn't hear you very well. Are you getting tired? Praise the Lord. Well, listen to me. The entrance of the world give it light. As you hear me today, you are so delighted. You shall receive faith and blossom. Chapter 2, verse 23. 
I read. Your chapter 2 verse 1. Be glad there. Ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the trees bear it have fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do eat their strength. Be glad there. Ye children of Zion, I rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fast shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, that are there wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know I am the, in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and no else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Listen to me. God Almighty has made it very clear to us that as we dwell in His presence, as we return unto Him, everything that's taken away from us shall be restored. And even the things we have shall flourish. None of the things we love we have shall be lost. And if there is anything taken from us, we shall recover all of them. Now take note. The young man that said he came from Port Harcourt, from River State, he said a loss is con the container was seized and there was no more hope. And he ran to the source. He returned back to the Lord. What happened to him? I'm asking you a question to confirm the message you are preaching. What happened to him? Now, container that was seized, pronounced seized, and he has no money to clear it. The same container God took over. The same container as he continued to remain here and cry to God here and say, Here is my source. God gave it to me. God Almighty, do something. As he returned to God in repentance and in righteousness, God touched somebody and he worked for him and cleared the goods for 27 million and gave him the container back, which was seized. So, all I want you to understand, if we will remain in the presence of God, if we return to God, whatsoever you have lost, we will restore back to you. Whatsoever you have, you have, no evil shall befall it. Because the glory of God, the presence of God, will keep those things. Can I hear you say amen? And all the years that the enemy has ravaged stolen things from you all those years everything stolen shall be restored in jesus name so get ready as long as this message is concerned god is saying there shall be showers of blessings and as you listen to these messages honestly the rain will fall the glory will come upon you what you have received you can never lose it Rather, you will see them more and more. Can I hear you say amen to that? So, let us make sure you don't keep away. You don't say, ah, yet yeah, last month, I was blessed abundantly. And you began to get your text month and say, well, I don't have time on Tuesday again. I don't have time on Sunday again. I don't have time. And then you go to do what you like. You will lose all. The only way to receive and return, remaining with God, the source, the giver. The only way to recover is remaining with God in dwelling in what? In his goodness, in his righteousness, in his holiness. As you go on to practice it and remaining, coming to the church, listening to the word of God, I'm assuring you, you will blossom. You will increase more and more. Can I hear you say amen to that? Take note of that. Now, the Bible said, what we are reading, it says chapter 2, I'm talking about Jewel, Jewel chapter 2, and verse 29. 
it says, look at it. Chapter, let's read from verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the handmaids and upon them. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days. I will pour out my spirit. Praise the Lord. And in verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now take a look at this point. Praise the Lord. We are in the last days. Christ has come. The Holy Ghost is poured out. As many who will give their life to Jesus Christ, they will receive the Spirit of God upon them. As many will repent and turn to the Lord, they shall be saved. The Spirit of God shall come upon them. And as they go on to dwell in righteousness, honestly, whatever you are lost from Adam shall be restored. And I want to look to what you have, you cannot lose them at all at all. Are you hearing me? So, this is the last days. And I want to let you know, Christ has come. Salvation has come. Holy Ghost has been poured out. It's left for you to do what? To call, repent, and receive Christ, and then receive the nature that was lost, and go on to practice, dwell in them, and practice righteousness. Honestly, you can't lose anything. Rather, you will recover everything lost from Adam. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Do you actually understand what I'm saying? Pray, but that is it. That's truth. Praise the Lord. So, take note of this point. As I go on in explaining and expatiating on these scriptures. So, I want to take note. Seeing that God's nature of goodness has been restored to us through who? Jesus Christ our lord and personal savior we should embrace it continuously are you hearing me we must not walk in isolation of god's goodness now we are born again we must dwell in it we must ensure we have it we must practice it practice what i'm not hearing you practice God's goodness, righteousness on every side, continuously throughout this month. As we practice it, I want to let you know to the point that the radiation of God's goodness will change your countenance, your expression, like that of Moses, to the extent that the devil. An evil personality will not be able to touch or behold us in Jesus' name. Remember the case of Jesus Christ. Before I go to that point, all I want to let you know is, let us make sure we practicalize righteousness, holiness. We demonstrate the goodness of God to the point that whoever that comes around you, we see the goodness of God. That whoever that even the devil and demons and the agent when they see you because of the level and nature of goodness upon you that you demonstrate that you speak to people even your enemy that are witches and wizards they were ashamed of themselves <laughs> you don't understand what i'm saying even the occult men and women who would not want to harm you but because you are going about doing good living right helping everybody they they were ashamed of themselves Whenever they see you, if and when they see you, they will bow their head in shame. Because this man is full of goodness, which you even practiced towards them. You help their children. You do good to them. You pray for them. You give to them. You spoil them with goodness of God. My friend, those people will be, if they have been the cause of your problem, they will be ashamed. They will bow their head in shame. Because the, the kind of what they are doing will make them to be broken 
and be sorry for all their wickedness. Do you know what the Bible said? In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And he said, if you be followers, according to 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 13, if you be followers of that which is good, who is that will harm you? Nobody. Even your enemy will be wicked and will be powerless. Imagine choosing people going around and saying, I am a choosing. I am a choosing. The I'm robber, which is even sometimes when they call the people and see, you know, caught them on the road and see you with their problem, they say, Stay by this side. We are not for you. I don't know whether anybody have known that. Because of the glory of God. They say, Choose him. Uh, if you made enemies, they say, Oh, you didn't tell us you're choosing. Come this side. Even that custom brother that testified was telling us on Sunday that when they struck and arrested all of them, and then he said, I'm a choose, you know, they said, Baba, we are not here for you. Step by the side. And then when they said, step by, and this was the man who has his pistol, his ID card there. And if they ha happened to charge the bag and discover and get it from him, that was all. That would be all. If they capture him with pistol that night, I know he's a first man, then that the case will be concluded. But now they say, We are not here for you. Your hand said to you, your ID card, your pistol, the notwithstanding, we are not here for you. Stay here. Praise the Lord. So if you be fullness of that which is good, if you be doer of that which is good, the glory of God will cover you. And the way, when the enemy comes, when they slow, they look at you, they might not see you. They won't touch you. Imagine a situation where they collected the pistol and left him. Or collected the, the, collected the ID and, everything, and left him. The handset, everything. He, will, he has lost something. Sometimes they display himself in the custom that he, he took the, and they took it from him. Before you know it, he, he, will, he will have entered the room. If they searched back that bag, remember the bag was not with him, yet they could not touch the bag. But if they searched and discovered his owner uh, and took the vessel and went away, when he goes back to the coast and said, I lost my, um, my pistol when I traveled, what do you think will happen? Got the room, got the room first. But then what I'm saying is it true? You will enter the room before you explain yourself. No, but what he had was not touched because his word he chosen. Dwelling in the glory of God. That is exactly what I'm saying. He was not touched. His, his, goose, uh, his ID card, his answers, everything he had received from God, all of them was kept. His uniform was kept. His pistol was kept. That is why he was able to, you know, try out gloriously and fulfill his uh, years of service and retire gloriously. Otherwise, they would have, they would have dismissed him. So, what you have received shall not be touched. If you continue to behold, to practice the goodness of God, to help, to love, to live right, to continue to come to service, honestly, you will fulfill your years. Somebody should say amen. You see, when I see that Baba walking there now, going there now, at the age of 98, going around, coming to church and going, look at him there. I tell you, this is the, this is the testimony, it's the goodness of God. A man, 90, 98 years, is coming to church and going. Look at him. Coming to church and going. Coming to church and going. Nobody's holding him. He's not wearing glass. My friend, dwell in the presence of God who matters. 98 years. Praise the Lord. It will come to service, and from here, you go to club, enter bus, go every, and it's not holding stick. But who is that man? Who is that man? An intercessor. He's an intercessor. 
Night and day, he's praying for church among the intercessors. And at night eight, he's walking strong. Our God is Baba, dwelling in the presence of God, abound in the glory of God. For two years, he went on to 100 years. And he's walking around. If not, if not up to, if not up to, maybe it's about hundred years. Praise the Lord. I don't know the years. He told us ninety seven. Which year is it? Last year, the last two years. Where is the most is them? Which year? Maybe it was. Is it last year? Last two years. So the last two years. Last year? So by now, how many years do you think it will be? Nine, eight years. Next two years, it will become how many? And he's not holding stick. And he's jump, he jumping box. Praise the Lord. My, my persuasion to you, the well in the presence of God. Return, continue to practice righteousness because when you do the Bible says you shall flourish like a palm tree and even in your old age you will still be bringing forth fruit so that's the point so I want to let me just rush and close but the point is the, 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 the message is self explanatory it's explaining itself by what you are hearing and seeing praise the Lord so the demoniac saw Jesus, the man that nobody could pass through him. Is he bowed down and said, Have you come to torment me before the time? Thou son of the living God. And yet nobody could pass there, but because of the glory of God. And I want to let you know that will be our portion. I say it happened to me. I'm not telling what I don't know. So many years back. And I have a number of people who came to me and saw me. Not that I'm having any discussion with them, not looking at me, the father. Something is wrong. Imagine somebody who saw me and father. Will he, will, he, will he steal my property? I remember one of them. I said, please, uh, you will help, help me to push my motor. Help me to push my motor. The man will touch my motor and father. I said, what is wrong with you? He will push my motor and touch my father. I said, what is wrong? And then they say to me, is Afa. Ah, no wonder. Afa with the charms and so on. They can't touch my vehicle. Praise the Lord. They can't. Did you hear that Afa that was hearing my message? I gave this one last two weeks. Hearing my message only through the cassette. And then the problem of what? To back losses for four years disappear and it became a shoes. How will that person come and steal? Hold on now. I know you can clap. How can the same person come and steal my steal my handset? Imagine me going there and say, eh, give me your handset. Eh? The man who will see me and fell down. Got my handset. The hand will remain there. <laughs> praise, praise, praise the Lord. So <laughs> that is true. They cannot remove, they cannot pull it out. So what am I saying? As to remain in the presence of God. What you have received cannot be touched. It cannot be tampered. And if what you have, you are not losing it, you'll be increasing. You'll be multiplying more and more. Can somebody say amen? So take note. Our blessings shall be untouched. And showers will increase. Mighty in our lives in Jesus' name. The reason is this in first Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. Is Sansa B he said, When I begin, I will also make a end. God does not give you and take away. Are you hearing me? When God gives you, it shall be permanent, it will increase. It will increase. Can I hear you say amen? So in Psalm 138, verse 8. Psalm 138. As you remain with him, look at what God will do. Psalm 138. I read verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. 
thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. For take not the works of thy own hands. You know what will happen? If you give you, you will protect it. You will perfect it. Are you hearing me? He will perfect what has given to you. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Now, if you look at Romans chapter 8 verse 31, that great question, he said, what shall we then say to these things? All these things that happen up and down, all these troubles here and there, now, it's not for me, I'm for you. Chapter 8 verse 31, if you, God be with you, you be with him, he said in verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? The answer is this. If God be for us, who can be against us? You receive abundance of blessing last month. God bless you abundantly with baptism of abundance. Am I right? Now, the enemies are raging up and down and causing trouble and killing and stealing and doing evil. The question now is, if God be for you, I'm not hearing you. Who will be against the abundance you have received? Who will be against your head, against your family, against your business, against your finance? If God be for you, who can be against them? No one. If he be with you, the one that did not spare his only son, but gave him free of charge, what will he withhold from you? He will give you all things, he will protect you, and know which are before you in Jesus' name. Look at that place very well. Chapter 8 and verse 31, 32, and 33. Romans 8, verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything, anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies it. Anywhere that trying to lay charge, he said, I am the one that you do what? Justify. Nobody can lay charge that accuse you to steal from you, to destroy what belongs to you. God said, I am the justifier. You have no right to accuse my servant. He see you. You will never lose what you have. You will return it. You will increase. More. I didn't hear you again. He see you. You will blossom. Praise the Lord. I said somebody will blossom. Who is that person? Me, number one. Something bl great, blessing, is about to happen in my life. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to take you to the scripture in Psalm 121 verse 1. Psalm 1, 2, 1. I read verse 1. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which met heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth me will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and coming in from this time forth, even forever. He see you, a child of God. God will preserve you from all evil. He will preserve your sleeping and waking up. He will preserve your going out and coming in. No evil shall be for you. No evil shall be for your business, your health. Your... I don't know what you have received. 
Any man trying to tamper with that will meet destruction. Imagine our sister walking in a company and a Chinese man was the owner and he also there was a Chinese woman as general manager and the, the brother of the Chinese man was acting for him in Nigeria and then um, the general manager the, the, the man acting said he, whatever this woman said in this company is final and the woman looked at her sister and said this person is not adding any value to our company moreover it's like it's useless in our company yeah, the woman that said everything and the, whatever he said will be honored. He's not talking to our sister. Can you imagine that? And then one day he summoned everybody and said, one person will be stuck in this, com this company. And they, then when the people came, he said, he called her sister, come. He said, you are not adding value in this company. You are just wasting, it's like wasting the resources. Therefore, one person will go and that person is you. Talking to our sister, a hey, choose, you know. Say, that person is you. And our sister said, well, if you sack me, I still have hope. I will still eat. So you are going, that's all. So our sister just came back to the office, you know, sat and looked and people. That way there was Tuesday. And he, he turned to my cassette as a preaching. I said, whatever you ask God now, God will do it. He said, my pastor has said it. He said, now, I ask that this Chinese woman be sacked today. Uh -uh, the owner of company to be sacked. He said, that is, it, it, the, 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 something was asking, do you know what you are saying? Something was asking, asking her, do you know what he said? He said, my pastor said it, and uh, I've asked for it. And then before the message to round up, you know what happened? Before the day would have round off, they said, they had a noise. It was between the Chinese general woman, general manager, and the man, the, the man acting for the, the owner. They were having a problem. I have a problem. And the same woman that said, I will sack my sister, said, I will resign. And the man said, resign. And he called his brother in China. Look at what this one is saying. He said, buy a ticket, give her, let her come back. The same day she was sacked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brethren. If you are dwelling in the presence of God and if you return the glory doing good, living right, this God will be with you. You won't lose your position, you lose employment. Rather, those who will tamper with you, they will lose everything. Ah, you don't understand. Those who want to sack you will be sacked. Those who say, Well, you will not prosper, they will not prosper. That, they will give way to your prosperity <laughs> say amen to that <laughs> so the Chinese man was transported they started crying you know. he said I have children you know. I have children don't do me like this he said you must reach China he see you today I don't know who is uh, I you are resources your head your prosperity and said he's going to destroy you if god be for you <laughs> and that is why you must dwell in the presence in the glory of god so now like, whoever look at you with bad eye the eye will close <laughs> are you hearing me you are dangerous choosing people are dangerous to danger is it not true if we had our copy to give testimony you see how these people here are dangerous to what danger so nobody can touch you because you are doing what pleases god 
You are living right. You are following the Lord. You are choosing. You are following the presence of God. The abundance you are receive shall be permanent and flourish in Jesus' name. Look at our brother who was busy, you know, from three people to six people. Before you know it, some bus leader, he was moving from one, one uh, room to shop, from shop, and they built the church. And then he was looking for how to have transport for the church in Malawi. And then, and God had blessed him, and the enemy went and took over his uh, distributorship and began to, to you know, register it. I said, don't even say anything that you are finished. The blessing God given, has given to him. That's what this man wants to destroy. And then God had it from heaven and released two containers. And as if that was not enough, they said, all their container is shipped. How many? Nine containers. Our God is Baba. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Is he losing what he had? I'm asking you, is he losing what he had? No, it rather is having it more and more. All of you that receive abundance of blessing last month, as you remain in the glory of God, you will increase more and more. You will flourish. You will be a blessing to humanity in Jesus' name. I am very sure. That's why I'm talking to you in this way. So get ready. From today, people shall celebrate you. The one that they, they will say, ah, you see this person? <laughs> I want to I want to work with him. I'm happy about his life. How God bless him. From today, people will testify of the goodness of God in your life. Oh, I believe my report <laughs> my friend whether you believe it or not it must surely come to pass I used to ask people when I go to crusade I said you have not, I have not preached to you you don't even know what I am going to say I say you rise up and walk open your eyes and see blind people see let me walk uh, my people are here which effect it's not your faith. Are you hearing me? You have been going to church now. You have stayed your faith there. But to show you that God confirmed the word of his messenger, you see people rising up and walking, eye opening, and with deaf and dumb, hearing speaking, you know, mad people being rolled away. Because God is with me. And as God be with you today, I'm assuring you, you will do exploit. You will not lose what you have. Say amen. amen. So the abundance of things shall not be lost. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. I don't even know how to pronounce the power. The way you are pronouncing it, you know, I don't know the effect. For me, oh, the way I want to pronounce Behold, I give unto you. Hey. Praise, praise the Lord. The power I'm talking about is raw acid. Raw acid power. Raw power. When the power hits you, it will melt you. To tread on serpents and scorpions. And not all the power enemies. And nothing about enemies. Is the power to rule over my enemies. Praise the Lord. So, you have that power. No thing you have, as I will tamper with. Rather, I see you flourishing. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially, and ministerially. I see you flourishing. Do you know that if Jesus tarries, eh? The way choosing people will be blessed on earth. Eh? Although you might have trial persecution. Because you know, if you are rich, if you have something, people will envy you. In fact, if you don't have anything, nobody nobody care about you. Hey, you, you are wagering, look at you. But if you have something, eh? Everybody almost wants to be your enemy. 
But then, don't, nothing to worry about. Because greater is he that is you than he inside the world. When the child comes in as a father, he will lift up what? A standard. So that you will go and chime. Praise the Lord. So, all I want to let you know is that he see you choosing people. You are not diminishing. You are rather increasing what? More and more. Can I hear you say amen to that? And I see them when they give me. I travel to Togo. I mean to Cote d'Ivoire. It was competition. What is the competition? Who will it take care of pastor? Competition. You see, people that God had blessed. You see the brethren. See how they look there. They are looking for the best place in the whole. Uh, uh, code of word for pastor to stay. They want to give the pastor the best thing because they are mighty blessed. And then when they finish in, in Kotonu, uh, Togo people took over. And then Togo people said, Who will it? It's like, please, oh, this one, I'm going to take care of him. Those whom God has blessed. And if you look at them, they are multi, multi, multi. Oh, my father. Listen to me, he see you. All of you shall be mightily blessed. I will hear your testimonies. I am very, very sure. And you know, sometimes when you look at this brethren, you think that are ordinary. That's the thing that deceiving people. We are not ordinary. Now, this young man is telling you, I give him nine container. Nobody sees nine container in his body. They are in the goose and in the warehouse. They sent the applicant to bed. Some of you are billionaires. Nobody knows. Praise the Lord. I remember a brother that was among them that jumped out to give 500,000 this morning. I remember sometimes they would tell the customer, said, I give you 50 container. But he's among us. Nobody knows about him. Some of them, they say, I'll give you 100 containers. <laughs> you look at them. They sit in the chair, the wood. And then, when you, if you are close to them, you know that these ones are dons. These ones are billionaires. But yet, when they sit down here, in that a small, our small chair, we say, look at this man, look at him. Look at him. They see that poor man. My friend, he see you. The word I preach does not return to me void. All of you are empowered. All of you are blessed. All of you shall be channels of blessed to humanity. In the name of Jesus. What you are received, no man can tamper with it. In Isaiah 27, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 3. And I read, I the Lord do keep it. Who is keeping your blessing? Me. I the Lord do keep it. Mm -mm. And then one woman, one of her sisters, whom God has blessed with five boys. One of the child want to go out. And the Lord proved, I the Lord do keep it. All the effort to remove the child. The Lord said, I, the Lord, do keep it. What happened? Look at that place very well. You see your prosperity, your blessings. I, the Lord, do keep it. How will you water it? How long? Every moment. Least any hurt it. How will you keep it? How? Night and day. You are protected. Your goose is protected. The blessing is protected. Because God will keep it. God will water it every moment. Go. Your child, you will never suffer miscarriage. You will not lose what you have. Let me tell you, some brethren, please. I beg you in the name of the Lord. Don't behave like other people. You are a different person. You don't hear what I'm saying? You are what? Never you complain. Never you murmur. 
Never you allow compromise of any kind. Let me tell you, what you have is the greatest. Do you hear me? Come what may, whatever be the They say you are sick, oh, you are dying, you, know, you are not dying anything. It's just, it's just trial of faith. Whether what I'm preaching, are you believing it? You are not dying. You will fulfill your years. Are you hearing me? They say that the things are bad. You don't have money to eat again. It's a lie. The spirit is, that is in you is the producer. The spirit in you is the maker. By him, all things came into being. How can you be poor? What you need to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, give it to me. My friend, you don't ask God, how will you do it? He will do it because he is a creator. If you want to, let me put something to you now. You want to start a house, go and start a house. You want to buy a car, you don't have one. Uh, my friend, check the kind of car you want to buy. Tell the Lord, I need this car from now to next year. Or from now to three days. God will put it to your hands. <laughs> Brethren, let us learn our lesson. Children of Israel left Egypt, not with much goose. Not with a lot of bag of rice. Not with a car. But in the wilderness, there is still divided for them. The crossover. Man, I came from heaven. The earth to satisfaction. What I came from the rock. At every point in time, there is a solution. When the Amalek came, and they were fighting against them, the Lord said to Moses, you know, just you keep your hands off. Let Joshua and Caleb, let them fight. And the as the hand was up, they were winning the battle. They won the battle. When there was a branching serpent, I mean, serpent was biting them. He said, Make a branching serpent, look, lift it up. And whoever that is beaten by serpent, and look up there, the healing will come. This is thing that we are looking for remedy, looking for the, 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 the message that will kill the snake by. But he said, Don't look at the branching serpent, lift it up there immediately. The snake bite will what? Disappear. And then, uh, when that was, that was uh, the river Jordan, he said, you just step into there, the priest and you step, the, the river will do what? Part into two. Every situation, they had the remedy without anything in their hand. You have power of God. You have the spirit of God. There is a remedy to every situation. Draw from the source. What do I say? Who is the source? God. Where is the God? In heaven. Eh? He's living in heaven. Now, your heart is the temple of the living God. That is where he dwells. You need to say, God Almighty, do it for me. He will hear you because he's closer to you than me. Praise the Lord. He see you. You are not poor. You are not sick. He see you. You are protected. He see you. You will fulfill your years. He see you. You are a blessing to others. Do you hear me now? So that small thing uh, is pending you here. Tell the thing, shut up. Are you hearing me? It's funny here. I said, Pen, shut up. If you make a mistake, I bind you, I cast you out. Forget about it. Don't talk about it again. You can't resist that word. Because whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is losing heaven. So when you speak, speak as somebody in authority because God has given you the authority and stop doubting yourself and stop speaking like unbeliever eh, and so far you know I don't have plenty of money you must have money before you have money my friend your money is the hand of God are you hearing me if you ask him for money he'll give you money let me not talk too much let me round up praise the Lord Which, let, let, is it not these few people I'm talking talking all this guy wasting my strength praise the Lord 
Amen. May I, may I inform you, you are more than conquerors. Are you hearing me? Through Jesus Christ. I don't want to see you a beggar. See you complaining. You are dead though. In fact, you almost enter grave. Who told you? Praise the Lord. I don't want to hear you complaining and murmuring and speaking evil and uh, be angry and be tired. Rather, praise God. You are, in fact, was it yesterday or when? I, after speaking with the brethren, I, I started singing this song that said, Oh, we are in the Lord. Then in the Noni Mechuku. Then in the Noni Mechuzi. Then in the Noni Mechuzi. Oh, that in the Lord choosing. No, 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 you, you are speaking evil. Oh, that in the Lord choosing. We are in the good world. We are in the Lord choosing. We are in the good world. In the good world. In the good world. In the good world. We are in the Lord choosing. We are in the Lord's choosing. We are in the good world. In the good world. In the good world. world. That is it. Praise the Lord. So, nothing to worry about. You are in the good world. You are the children of the kingdom. The Bible tells me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. In this kingdom, God will give you what you need. Can I hear you say amen? So, remember, he has promised and he will not fail. That shall be what? I didn't hear you again. The heaven has opened and God will cause showers to come down in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Therefore, showers of salvation shall be yours showers of restoration shall be yours showers of sanctification shall be yours showers of holy ghost baptism and accompanying power shall be yours showers of all the fruits of all the gifts of all the spiritual blessings material blessings physical blessings all of them shall be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I don't know what I'm looking for. Shower is coming your way. Amen. Whether spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically, etc. All the showers, every area shall be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. God will surely cause his showers to fall upon us. To fall upon us. In Jesus' name. In Psalm 23, verse 1, let's read it. Psalm 23, and verse 1. It says, and I read, 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for that art with me. I rode and I start to comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with all ye. My cup runneth over, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A child of God, this is your portion. 
Are you hearing me? The psalmist said, and now we dwell. Take note of, and now we dwell. That is the beginning of the miracle. And now we dwell. Where? So, come. Come close. Let's worship the Lord. I want to let you know, goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life, let's worship him. Let's serve him righteousness in truth. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life in Jesus' name. So, make up your mind. I'm assuring you, you will never regret. Can I hear you say amen? So, throughout this month, till Jesus come, as you dwell in the house of the Lord, goodness and mercy shall follow you. Blessings of God shall follow you. You will never diminish. Rather, you will increase more and more. If you believe it, say amen. Say it again. If you are sleeping, say it. Praise the Lord. That is where I'm rounding up. But before I round up, we need to know something. But don't forget, if you are happy, you are joyful, because of this message, that is it. That is what I am called to do to you, to make sure if you came here with broken hearted, with a morning heart, I'll give you the message of joy, of gladness, of hope, that gladly you encourage to serve the Lord, to do the will of God, and be happy with God. Praise the Lord. I want to read some place for Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1. I want to read with understanding. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For what purpose? Because the Lord has anointed me to preach evil tidings. Read it very well. To preach what? Bad news. And Sammy now. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to make you sad. To make you sorrowful. What is what did the Spirit of God has anointed me to do? Good news. News that will gladly your heart will make you to turn from sorrow to joy. The news that will transform your life and make you lively and give you hope of making heaven at last. So, look at that place very well. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And look at what followed. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. He see you today as I proclaim liberty today you shall be liberated. As I speak today, joy will come upon you. As I speak today, broken heart will join you together. As I speak today, hope will come upon you. He see you, you shall blossom. You shall flourish. You shall make progress life. You shall succeed. And so obey the Lord and do his will in Jesus' name. So what they are going to do now, as I had it, that shall be showers of blessing. Now the scripture said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, as it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh, receive it. He see you today. You are among everyone. And everyone that asketh, that means you will receive, I will receive, if you receive, you will receive. If you ask, you will receive. Everyone that asks, salvation is here, restoration is here, sanctification is here, Holy Ghost baptism is here, fruit of the Spirit is here, and the gift of the Spirit is here, power of God is here, healing is here, 
deliverance is here blessings of all kind but my god that supply all your needs according to the riches in glory by christ jesus therefore let no man glory in man for all things are yours how many things all things are mine seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you remember a christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a christian do you hear me a christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a christian now take notes in first john chapter 3 verse 8 and i read first john chapter 3 verse 8 and it reads he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil if you look at verse 9 whosoever that is born of god does not commit sin for he still remained to him and he cannot sin because he is born of god verse 10 verse 10 in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So it is very clear, verse 8 says, a sinner is not a Christian. And verse 9 says, a Christian is not a sinner. What does it suggest? You need to search your life, repent of your sins, and promise God no more. And we shall become as you give a life to Jesus, shall receive newness of life, as you receive Jesus Christ, the glory will be restored for you to go on to live righteous life. But then the point is, what is sin? In First John chapter 5, verse 17, eight, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness, unbelief, unforgiveness, bitterness, keeping malice, lying, anger, hatred. It is such a lie. Lost thing after evil thing. Love of money, love of the world, covetousness. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. All this evil, I will do them no more. It is such a lie unfaithfulness, insincerity, exaggerations, talkativeness, backbiting, murmuring, cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol, confess them, renounce them, and promise God no more. In your sexual life, all those people that are going to native doctors to make sham those that go for pan reading for divination that is sin and all those people that belong to secret court open court marine court witchcraft court local or international court all court is in a sin whether secret or open you must renounce them to the whatsoever they are given to you in that very kingdom whatsoever are giving you at a point of initiation they gave you ring they gave you staff they gave you image of men or women a woman or clothes they gave you anything burn them completely the altar you are raised up on them destroy that altar i mean you are ways those are into stealing any kind of stealing whether you steal from your wife, from your husband, from your parents, from your company, that is stealing, that is sin. 
Or maybe you steal from the church. That is sin. I mean, you are ways. And all those into burglary, breaking home of people, packing their goods, that is sin. Such your life. All those into armed robbery, you attack people with weapon and calling their goods, that is wickedness. All those into Yahoo, Yahoo, you know, crime, fraud, or 419. You do black people, white people. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do them no more. I mean, your ways. The righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know the evil your soul they are said to do. I mean, tomorrow may be too late. I want you to take note of this. If you are stealing from government, from anybody, repent and renounce it. And don't bring the money you are stolen to the Lord Jesus. We don't need your money. You have defrauded people, return it. You have stolen their property, return it back to them. Amen. I you are with all those into masturbation, homosexual, lesbianism. All those in the adultery, fornication, repent and promise God no more. Don't do that anymore. I mean, your ways. Are you into prostitution? Do you encourage your daughter? I mean, your ways. Do you receive money from them? That is, do you patronize the prostitute? That is wickedness. I mean your ways and promise God no more. Do you commit abortion? Are you a murderer? That's wickedness. You keep people as the result of ritual, ritual practices. That's wickedness. Or kidnapping and killing, or hired assassin, or banditry. For whatever reason, out of envy, you kill. You can never be justified. Repent and promise God no more. Amen. You are ways. I don't know the evil you have done in secret or open. I want to let you know. The Bible says, Behold, you have sinned, and your sin will find you out. A day shall come. You cannot escape the judgment of God. No matter how you deceive people or hypocritical acted, God will expose you, He will arrest you, and will judge you. Amen. You are ways. The righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those that are either fighting and quarreling. All those who have unforgiveness, repent. All those that give bribe and take bribe and stop money from people because of our uniform, because of our position, repent and promise not no more. All those people involved into disobedience to their parents, to their husband, or beating your wife, that is sin. Those working for people, you don't do the work and you collect their salary, that is sin. But you don't pay those working for you, that's fraud, that's sin. I don't know the wickedness are into those people that break covenant. The agreement, you break it, you don't care, you don't keep the time. Ask God for mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. All those into smuggling, those that smoke cigarettes, take snuff, Indian ham, cocaine, heroin, buying it for people, selling it. Don't bring the money here. We don't need it. I mean, you are with. 
those that take alcoholic drinks, one percent to half percent, that sell it, that buy it for people, repent and promise God no more. Don't sell it, don't buy it for anybody, no matter how high. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Can you see that this issue of alcoholism is demonic? Can you imagine a station? They call our brother and said, eh, We are coming to meet you. Prepare us what to eat. And then the brother prepared for them and bought malt. And then when they came out, they said, eh, Where is the thing? And they brought to joy. They said, Where is the where is alcohol? So, no beer. So, nothing. Said, all of us. Oh, yeah. What do we do? They said, Let's go. All of them just went out. Abandon the food, abandon the mouth to show you the demonic connection. Sometimes you, you don't see anything wrong in it. But look at how unbelievers, all of them in unity, agree, abandon rice, abandon mouth, abandon everything, and move away because there was no what? Alcoholism. And if they can do that, you too can get to the house, abandon whatever they have, because you see a bottle of what? Alcoholics. You can abandon everything. Even the dash money say no. Say, so long you are taking alcoholic, I won't take your money. I won't take, I won't do anything with you. I mean the you are ways. Is it clear? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom. But when we see this kind of truth, you don't need you don't just bypass it. You need to highlight it. All of them, all of them leaving the I don't know what they did with the food that day. The food that was cooked for public. All of them left the food, left the mud. They didn't say, let us consider mud. Some of us say, what this pastor say? Uh, well, I will not go drink a uh, listing. Alcoholic is demonic. Whether one percent or half percent, don't touch it. Don't buy it for anybody. Don't keep, don't walk where damage manufacturing it. Take snow for cigarettes, or Indian hemp, or cocaine, or heroin. My friend, don't touch it. Don't bring the money here. I mean, you are ways. Now, listen to me. All those people that are into business or hairdressing, please close that business. Where beauty shop. As a child of God, don't do that. I mean, you are wait. Those that are into polygamous marriage, your second wife, your third wife, and you're happy. Your fourth wife, and you're telling people you're married. No, you didn't marry. You're just committing adultery. You're a prostitute. When you're a second wife, third wife, fourth wife, fifth wife, you didn't marry. Or maybe you have two wives, three wives, four wives, five wives, and then you multiply wives everywhere. And whenever you are going to out, all of them wear uniform. And they ask you, who, is, who are these women? He said, that's wife number one, wife number two, wife number three, wife number four. Is it not abomination? Is against the will of God. You don't divorce your wife for any reason, as long as your first wife, except she married before, and they came to you and you discover you carry all the property. So go back to the husband. You don't divorce your wife. You don't divorce your husband, except that man married before. Except you married before, your husband can send you packing because you are not a wife. And if your second wife or third wife, fourth wife, you are committing adultery. And if you marry someone that is divorced, you are committing adultery. And if you have three wives, you are committing adultery. And no adulterer that can enter the kingdom of God. I mean, your ways. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Matthew chapter 19, and verse 4. Look at your Bible. 19, and verse 4. And I read, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read 
that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and what happened and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they two shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twin but one flesh therefore what God has joined together let no man put asunder marriage is between a man and a woman until the dead do your part you can only be loosed by death if there is no death you have no power to separate for your wife of a husband or to multiply wives and if you have done that look at your bible in chapter 19 and verse 8 he said unto them mostly because of the hardness of your heart suffer you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so and i said unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery and whosoever and whoso married her which is put away that commit adultery if you marry a divorcee you commit adultery amen the you are ways now if you are into makeup you paint your hands and paint your leg paint your mouth and paint your eyes and put extra finger extra eye extra nose attachment and weave on earrings and bango that is sin you don't need makeup or maybe you bleach your body and become yellow overnight that is sin you don't need the bleach bleaching or maybe among those people that dress to show your nakedness dress to key to seduce and among those that dress they expose your armpit your tummy your waist your chest your laps my friend cover your body properly well or a young man that do jericho rough hair scattered hair you play the hair like a woman you don't need that but put chains and rings and beads and cross to the sea may i remind you christ is no longer on the cross cross is a cause stop wearing that thing to deceive people i mean you are ways my bible tells me in jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30 he said when they are spoiled what shall they do do they go after painting after ornament whenever a woman has spoiled he begins to make up run away from makeup i mean do you are ways and if a woman wearing trousers dressed like a man that is seen a man wearing skirt and blouse dressed like a woman that's an abomination in deuteronomy 22 verse 5 i read the Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertaining to a man and shall a man put on woman's garment for all that do so are abomination of the lord thy god the award abomination and abominable people cannot enter heaven revelation 21 and verse 8 revelation 21 verse 8 but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable take note abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in the lake which one with fire and brimstone which is the second death they shall be cast into hell fire i pray it shall never be your portion do you know what there is a place you must not wish your enemy to go the worst no matter the person kill you you must not uh, wish that person to go to hell fire are you hearing me that's why jesus said you should pray and do good to your enemy so that this soul can recover 
so that they will not go to hell fire hell fire is a horrible place it's a place of torment a place of suffering that once you enter no more coming out from eternity to eternity I pray it shall never be the portion of all my enemies in Jesus name I am sure none of you are desiring to go there and your desire to make heaven at last shall be granted let somebody say amen don't wish anybody what is a horrible place praise the lord so keep away from abominable thing i'll make you to go to hell fire i want to remind you somebody maybe ask them pastor why are you mentioning these things one by one my answer is this in Proverbs 28 verse 13 he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy do you want to have mercy you must know your sin and then you can say i'm sorry i will do it no more god will show you mercy if you don't know it you can never repent from them are you there are some prostitutes that came here five ladies they came from hotel and after i finished preaching they were saying ah prostitution is insane they are going to church and they are paying tight we told them prostitution is sin that's how they went to the hotel and packed their load and came out and repented but they are going to church paying tight and here they are living in prostitution and in hotel and if I didn't explain to them how will they know that is why we mention these things one by one so you'll be convicted by this so what i'm doing is evil i will do them no more mercy will come may i remind you if you have done evil if you are living in sin and you hurt me and you are you are so rueful and you need to repent there is a provision for the sins that are past. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 said that, and verse 22 rather, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 said, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sins. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And I want to let you know, in Old Testament, Laws were used, blood of animals without blemish, to cover their sins. When God is looking up at that blood, he will not see their sin. But God sees that as weak, because God is looking for the blood that will wash away their sin, so that he can receive man and be with man forever and ever. And so he established the new covenant, which is sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ which watches away takes away our sins in John chapter 1 let's read it verse 29 John chapter 1 and verse 29 please open your Bible let's read the next day John see Jesus coming unto him and say behold the Lamp of God which take it away the sin of the world does it cover i'm asking the question does the lamp of god cover sin it takes it away the lamp of god is it an animal no it is jesus christ his blood watches away our sin no wonder the bible said in john chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth he should not perish but have everlasting life you see it god i give you not jesus that by his righteousness by his precious blood our sins shall be washed away or shall become a new creature the bible made us understand in 
John chapter 19 verse 30 he said it is finished when he shed the blood Jesus said it is finished praise the Lord the sacrifices of sin is all over he has finished it once and for all and sat on the right hand of God and I want to let you know to let anybody who wants to be saved must come to the Father through Jesus Christ so that your blood, your sins shall be washed away by his blood in John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus said I am the way I am not a way if I am a way it means there are other ways he said I am the way no other way the truth, the life no one coming to the Father but by me there is no other way to reconcile with God except through Jesus Christ by the means of the blood which he shed for me and for you at the cross of Calvary no wonder in John chapter 10 verse 10 he said I come that they might have life I have it more abundantly if you receive Jesus you receive eternal life in John chapter 8 verse 36 he said if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed if you want total freedom it is only through who? Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 11 28 he said come to me all ye that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest it's only in him we have rest from our sin from our burden only through Jesus Christ look at the Bible in John chapter 1 and verse 12 John chapter 1 verse 12 but as many as received him to then gave him power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name as many as receive who what power do they receive power of sonship when you receive that power is called power of transformation it changes you from an evil person to a new person it changes you from a child of the world child of Satan to the child of the living God it is the blood that does that work the blood of Jesus as we see Jesus that shall be transformation no wonder in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 he said therefore therefore if any man be in Christ is a new creation all things have passed away and all things have become new. as you come to Jesus today that shall be transformation that shall be newness of life your life will change you shall become a new creature you will receive nature to live right to do right to please God to maintain the goodness of God and as you do I'm assuring you the blessings of the kingdom shall be yours can I hear you say amen? amen so as I pray for you today I have assurance that the showers of blessing shall come upon you amen. let that person say amen. amen there shall be showers of blessing no wonder seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you you see from today I will hear your testimony all these things I don't know what I'm looking for spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus shall be yours material blessings shall be yours financial physical blessings sound health shall be yours I don't know what I'm looking for God will give it to you I said God will give it to you and it shall be yours in Jesus name are you ready for it now? How many of you want to receive the showers? Do well in the presence of God. Do right. You shall be blessed. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Rise up and call. Rise up and call. Rise up and call. Rise up and call. Rise up 
and call upon the name of the Lord. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Let's see Kakarama. Let's can Jeliko Prema Duvia. Let's can the Lika Perusia. Razando Vika Peruskitena. Razangeli Maruskitena. Lord, show mercy. Save souls. Transform souls. Deliver souls. Save your people. Deliver your people. Walk on your people. In a way. Let's cut the Namaraka Sandel, Menus in Jenico Pesovana, Lassandel Nico Prema Ruskitena. Everybody pray. Pray with all your heart. I am sorry, O oh Lord. Show me mercy. Forgive me. I confess all my iniquities and sins and transgression. Forgive me. Lord, forgive me, save me, restore me, deliver me, walk on me, help me, oh Lord, help me. Who karamazu, she losing the licope, razande no naka, razando me kampelusia, let's kanjeli marakazin de licope, Lord, help us, Lord. Everybody pray. Let everyone pray. Let everyone pray. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am. Oh, Lord. I want more time. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, Lord. If you are truly sorry, bow down your head, close your eyes, keep your two hands up. That person that committed adultery, promise God no more. Every hands up, eyes closed and head bow. If you are truly sorry, the person that has unforgiving heart, ask for mercy. You that is smoking and drinking, Ask for mercy. That person that is into kidnapping and killing. Ask for mercy. Killing is not of God. Ask for mercy. The person into homosexual, lesbian is, is demonic. Ask for mercy. That person that he visited the prostitute. Ask for mercy. And you that is in there, you know, you are into terrible art of adultery because you want to marry, you want to marry and you are submitting your body for destruction ask for mercy and run away from that the person that you know, belongs to secret court, marine court repent and promise God you that is stealing from where you are walking, ask for mercy ask God to forgive you that person that is quarreling, fighting as for me, I mean your ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore from today. I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all his evil. From today, 
I invite Jesus Christ into my life, into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Shout Amen. Keep your two hands up. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus, let the Savior. I surrender. I surrender. Surrender. Oh, to Jesus, let us I surrender. I surrender. I'm praying for you, Heavenly Father. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I present my people before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them, in your rod, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, I pray that yoke in Jesus' name. From this hour, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus Christ. Lord, I can't so their name in the book of death. Father, write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. I pray for restoration. Restoration. Lord, I pray for sanctification. Sanctify their heart. Uproot the root of sin from their heart. Jesus' name. Daddy, this is the last days. You promised to pour your spirit out upon all flesh. Oh yeah, pour your spirit. Amen. Baptize them with the Holy Ghost and power in Jesus' name. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. And it is amen in heaven. Bring down your hands. I congratulate you. Keep your offering up.